All right, adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, not dealing with mixed numbers today, just fractions. Okay, when adding, but the same rules apply. When adding or subtracting fractions or mixed numbers. You must you must always have common denominators. Now the denominator is what of the fraction? The bottom. bottom number. Okay. So for us to be able to add fractions. Okay, the bottom number must be the same with all the fractions that we're adding. Okay, for example, um, four sevenths plus five sevenths. Okay, obviously here the denominator is the same. Okay, it's both seven. So what that gives us then is it gives us this expression. 4 plus 5 over 7. Okay? We do not we do not add the denominator together. Okay? Once it's the same, it stays the same unless you have to reduce it. Okay? That'd be like saying, you know, I got eight pieces of pizza in a box and Noah takes five of them and Emma wants to make sure she can still cheer, so she only takes one of them. Okay? So together they had six of the eight pieces, not six of 16 pieces, okay? And so it would be six of eight pieces, all right? So the bottom number doesn't add together, okay? It stays the same. Once it is the same, it stays the same unless you have to reduce it, all right? So if we just take four plus five, then that's nine over seven. Okay, and 9 over 7 is what? Improper. improper. So 9 over 7 is an improper fraction. Okay, it's an improper fraction that I must change to a mixed number. Okay, so we have to change it to a mixed number. Now, we've already talked about this, but you basically divide 7 into 9. 7 goes into 9 one time, be 7, remainder 2, and take the 2 and put it over the 7. So 1 and 2 over 7 is your answer. Okay, 1 and 2 over 7 is the answer. Yes, Grant, I mean Cameron. No, it's always bottom number into the top number anytime you're changing a fraction. It's always the denominator into the numerator, regardless of what, what the two are. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. Uh, let's see here. Seven twelfths. Minus five twelfths. <clears throat> Seven twelfths minus five twelfths. Okay, that's just seven minus five over twelve. Okay, and what is seven minus five? Two. Over 12. 2 over 12 will reduce. What will it reduce to? 1 over 6. Okay. Now, how we reduce that, make sure everybody understands, we simply divide it by 2 over 2. 2 into that, 2 into that. And that's where we got the 1 sixth.
Okay. All right, now let's talk about if they don't have common denominators. Okay, for example, 7 over 12 minus 5 over 18. So they don't have common denominators. Okay, well, we must make them have common denominators. We must make two equivalent fractions with the bottom number, the denominator, being exactly the same. So to do that, To do that, we have to find the LCD, least common denominator, also known as LCM, least common multiple, of the two denominators. So, what is the LCM of 12 and 18? 36. Okay, so I'm going to create two fractions with 36 on the bottom. Okay, what did we do to 18 to make it 36? Multiplied it by 2. So I do the same thing to the top, which gives me 10. What did we do to 12 to make it 36? By 3. So I do the same thing to the top, gives me 21. Okay, now we have 21 minus 10 over 36. 21 minus 10 is what? 11. So 11, 36. 11 over 36 doesn't reduce because there's no common factors between 11 and 36. And so that would be our answer. Okay, so look at another one with uncommon denominators. Uh, let's look at one adding. One and nine, one ninth plus five over six. One ninth plus five over six. So the least common denominator between nine and six would be what, Drew? Eighteen. So I'm going to create two fractions with 18 on the bottom. Okay, and so what did we do to 6 to make it 18? By 3. So that would be 15 there. What did we do to 9 to make it 18? By 2. And that would be 2 plus 15 over the denominator of 18, which is what? Yeah, 17 over 18. Okay. All right, I want you to do this one on your own. Uh, let's see here. 11 twelfths minus 3 fourths. I'll give you a minute or so to do that. All right, who has an answer? Owen, one-sixth, one that is correct. Now, here's why it is correct. We have our two fractions. What is the common denominator between 12 and 4? 12. So 12, this one stays the same because we multiplied by 1. So 11, there. What do we do to 4 to make it 12? Multiplied by 3, so that gives us 9. What's 11 minus 9? 2. Which we reduce, we reduce it by 2 over 2, which means it's 1 sixth. 
Okay. Now I want to look at one that has three numbers in it. Uh, let's see here. Five six minus seven thirtieths minus two fifths. Okay, so what is the common denominator between 6, 30, and 5? 30. So we're going to have 30 on the bottom of each of these fractions. So what did we do to 6 to make it 30? Okay, multiplied by 5, so we're going to do the same thing to the top. That would be 25. Obviously, we did nothing to 30 to make it 30, so we just put the 7 here, and we multiplied 5 by what? 6. So that would be 12. So now, there's not a commutative or associative property of subtraction, so I've just got to start from left to right and do this one first, 25 minus 7 over 30, which is 18 over 30 minus 12 over 30, so that gives me 18 minus 12 over 30, which is 6 over 30, which is 1 fifth. All right, now one other one I want to look at here. X plus 4 over 8 equals 5 over 8. And so they want to know what X is. So it's fairly simplistic. Okay, so we're saying this. We're saying that <clears throat> X plus 4 over 8 is equal to 5 over 8. Well, what's the only thing that you can add to 4 to get 5? 1. So the answer here then is x is equal to 1 8. It has to be 8 because I can't add it to 4 unless it's got an 8 on the bottom. Okay? And so that's what you've got. All right, your homework. I'm going to cut it down somewhat, so let's go 5.1, and we'll go 12, we'll go 14 through 34. Okay, still got almost 11, 12 minutes left in class, so you can get Hopefully quite a bit of it done.